He is in Bedminster, New Jersey. It's the operating White House while the president is there. Uh, Kevin, tell us about the departure of Stephen Bannon. Boy, let me tell you, uh, first, we're actually very close to Camp David, my friend. We've been following the president sort of bounce around. You're certainly to be uh, forgiven. We're uh, in suburban uh, Maryland here, not terribly far from Camp David and not, frankly, very far from the nation's capital, where once again, the center of the political world is focused. Steve Bannon is out. We had heard rumblings you may have seen yesterday in that wide ranging interview with the American prospect. Bannon really seemed to take some shots at not only some administration officials, but certainly he seemed to depart from what the president was saying about North Korea. Now, we're not suggesting, and you heard John Roberts say as much, that that in and of itself was enough to move him out of the job. But make no mistake about it, Steve Bannon's departure is in part driven by the fact that the president has never felt like he was somehow the puppet master. You may remember what Time Magazine called him, the great manipulator. Remember that, that cover? Well, it certainly didn't make the president happy. And as uh, John and others have now been reporting, Steve Bannon is out. This does not come as a great surprise. We certainly hope to get much more information about his departure as we continue our coverage here on Fox News this afternoon. As for the president, of course, here at uh, Camp David, which is very nearby, he's got some major discussions to have with his national security senior cadre. Now, uh, we're we're talking some very big names here, more than a dozen folks and some big names, of course, that people at home would know, like Vice President Mike Pence, uh, Mattis, uh, Nikki Haley, among others, Rex Tillerson, even Jeff Sessions among those who will be there, as well as H.R. McMaster. And if you know about the battle sort of between McMaster and Bannon, uh, that is uh, obviously pretty interesting as well. Now, they're here to talk about a number of major issues, including North Korea, the ongoing missile crisis there, John. What exactly is the next step? and how best to prevent North Korea from getting the ultimate weapon. That plus we also expect to hear them talk about the president's domestic security agenda and that will certainly include the border. Keep in mind the president next week will be talking about that at length. He's going to again get conversation not just on the strategic side but the legal side about the ongoing fight to secure America's border. And speaking of the fight, how about the extended protracted fight in Afghanistan? A war that is now America America's longest 17 years, trillions of dollars and thousands of lives. What is the best move forward from there? How on earth can we end the bloodshed and extract America from its longest war ever? Here's what the president had to say about the planning of this meeting just a few days ago. He said, and I'm going to tell you just uh, very quickly that the president said, uh, look, uh, we're going to take a very close look at it. Now, what does he mean by that? Simply speaking, uh, he's been in concert uh, with a lot of people who feel like enough is enough for America in terms of what it has extended and uh, spent, frankly, in that region of the world. But will that line up, John, with what his generals have to say? We'll see what uh, General Mattis and others, of course, will tell him about that. Maybe we get a good readout. We'll all be watching very carefully. But clearly, the big story at this hour Steve Bannon is out, and of course, we'll continue uh, to circle around that story, and we'll bring you all the latest details as we get it, but for now, back to you, my friend. Uh, Kevin, this is Heather. I had one question for you. Do we have any additional information as to how Steve Bannon was told? I know we had the one report that says he was told about 40 minutes ago. Uh, do we know how he was told, and do we know anything about the president's uh, reaction or mood at this point regarding it? Yeah, good question, Heather. We don't have a sense of the president's mood about this, but I really think the president tipped his hand uh, in talking about Steve Bannon uh, just the other day when he said, listen, uh, Mr. Bannon joined the campaign late. Again, sort of deflecting this idea that somehow he was the main force behind the Trump train. He also said he's a good man and we'll see. Remember when he said that? I think that uh, laid it out right there that we kind of felt like the writing was on the wall. What does that mean in terms of how soon did Bannon find out maybe after those comments that he was out of a job? Or did it happen, uh, happen suddenly? I've been doing what I should do, and that is checking my phone, <laughs> texting back and forth with administration officials. I don't have tons of uh, guidance to share with you. Let me just double check and make sure I didn't get anything during this live shot. Uh, we'll let you know. So uh, I don't have anything more, but as I get it, certainly I promise I'll pass it along to you, Heather. All right, Kevin, we'll check back with you. Thanks. Kevin Cork stays on top of things. He sure does.
Joining us now on the phone, Dana Perino, former White House press secretary under George W. Bush and co-host of The Five here on Fox News Channel. Uh, Dana, when, when people hear about this palace intrigue, you know, uh, chairs being shuffled around uh, in, in the Oval Office, they, they might not think it affects them, and maybe it doesn't. What, in your view, does the departure, the departure of Steve Bannon mean to this administration? I think a couple of things, John. First, I do think that it is true for a company as it is for the government that personnel is policy. And so the team is very important and who you have there is important. I think that um, this is a continuation of General John Kelly helping the president refocus the White House team. And I'm going to give you three D words. Steve Bannon had become a distraction because he was getting a lot more attention even than the president. You saw that even at the president's frustration with um, that book that Joshua Green of Bloomberg wrote, there was also reportedly distrust amongst the White House staff when it came to leaks and the belief that Steve Bannon was leaking about them and their colleagues, their friends. And third, I would say destruction. Steve Bannon had reportedly said he did not plan to be at the White House for longer than eight to 12 months. Well, you know, it's August, it's the eighth month of the presidency, and he hit his deadline. But I also think that when it comes to destruction, when he called the Robert Kuttner, the reporter of the American Prospect the other day, and just laid it all out there and really basically undermined President Trump on his North Korea policy. I think that was probably the final straw for the president. And for his chief of staff, General John Kelly, who is a military man, uh, after all, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for, for him to read those words from Steve Bannon that essentially there is no military solution to the North Korean problem. That's what Bannon had to say. And for General Kelly, um, well, that, that's not acceptable. Well, and, it, and also because if you're the president, you had just told North Korea that you will fight with fire and fury. And that was a successful move because North Korea backed down. They did not shoot missiles at Guam this week. And you also got China from a diplomatic standpoint to push back against North Korea. So I think that this is just a resettling of the White House. I've never seen um, this much change within a personnel in the White House, but I think that this is probably going to be good, especially for the staff. And apparently, Steve Bannon says he's prepared to help the president with his agenda when he's outside of the White House as well. Um, we'll see if that's helpful or hurtful. I don't know if this week that the Bannon's advice was helpful to the president in dealing with the aftermath of Charlottesville, but time will tell. That's what I was actually going to ask you, Dana. Um, do you think that this is also an effort to distance the administration from the you know, alt-right nationalists? Because, of course, Steve Bannon was connected to that. Well, so, yes, um, when Bannon was head of Breitbart, he said that he is, was providing a platform for the alt-right. And I had said on The Five, I think that the president would not pay a political price if he distanced himself from the alt-right. And in some ways, symbolically, yes, that's, look, it could be the case. But I actually think that the firing, whether it was a firing or a resignation, is still in question. The New York Times is reporting that Steve Bannon uh, submitted his resignation on August 7th. And the president had waited to decide what he was going to do. He doesn't like conflict in his inner circle. And I do think that he appreciates some of the work that Steve Bannon had done to help get him to the presidency. But he wants to be the main event. Um, and regardless of what an advisor can tell a president to do, the president himself or herself in the future, they are the ones responsible for what they say. So I don't know if this will help in the future uh, in regards to dealing with crises of like the one that we saw in this past week, but certainly for the country, I hope so. Let me read a quote from an Associated Press uh, piece written apparently by Carolyn Castor. She writes, one White House source twists the knife. His, meaning Bannon's departure, may seem turbulent in the media, but inside it will be very smooth. He has no projects or responsibilities to hand off. And that's a way of <laughs> yeah, saying that's that... that's a sick burn right yeah, there. That's what yeah. they call that, John. That's, that's somebody who's... <laughs> In the Oval it Office, you are, Ouch. it means you are so irrelevant to the operation that it doesn't matter if you leave. But please go. You are a distraction. We don't trust you. And you have been destructive to the White House and to the party. And so it will be better if you're not here. At this point in time, when so many Republican senators and members of Congress are so critical of the president for his handling of the Charlottesville incident, um, does the departure of Steve Bannon hold out? hope that that maybe there will be a a little less rancor within the republican party 
Well, that's a curious thing, John, because actually during the health care debate, as I understood it, um, Steve Bannon was actually trying to be pretty helpful. Um, when it didn't pass initially in the House, there was some grumbling that um, Steve Bannon had said, you are obligated to um, vote with this president and his agenda, and some members of Congress took umbrage at that. But yet, it, when it moved on and it finally passed the House and then it was getting through the Senate, of course, that ultimately failed, but apparently a lot of members of Congress felt like they could actually get a phone call return from Steve Bannon, and he was somebody that uh, you could work with. So mm -hmm. I don't know if members of Congress will think that it will be easier or harder to work with the White House now without Steve Bannon, but I don't think he was entirely unhelpful to this president. I think that he did some good work for him, if you're looking at it from President Trump's point of view. Uh, Dana, there's some information that has just uh, come our way from Doug McElway. Apparently there, and this is in, not entirely unexpected, uh, 19 different conservative groups are protesting the removal of Bannon and then possibly uh, Kellyanne Conway as well. Do you think that she's next? Oh, goodness. I, I, um, I certainly have not heard that at all. And in fact, she was um, utilized today very effectively by the White House to um, give some context and information for reporters this morning. So I certainly haven't heard that about Kellyanne Conway. And I think one of the things that Steve Bannon wanted to do is he just, he could not stand the establishment. And he exposed the establishment for what he thought it was. And he helped drive division within the Republican Party. Maybe division that was going to be inevitable, but he drove it through. Um, you know, you hear that there's possibly other people out at the White House. Politico's reporting that the head of public liaison is going to be out. This, again, could just be the resettling after General John Kelly took over as chief of staff, or it could mean that there are more departures to come because of concerns of leaks or whatever. Um, but I certainly haven't heard that about Kellyanne Conway and, and wouldn't believe that. Hmm. We just saw Until a. You call me back in two hours. <laughs> <laughs> we just saw a um, an acting uh, communications director appointed, Hope Hicks took the job yeah. at the ripe old age of 28. Now, you know, if, if you're Steve Bannon and you're calling up uh, American Prospect and, and railing about the things he railed about, North Korea and the alt-right and so forth, is that the kind of thing that a communications director wants to rein in? I mean, I guess what I'm asking is, you know, if there had been a, a, an established person in that position, would Bannon have felt free to pick up the phone? Possibly not, but I think the person who most would want uh, Steve Bannon not to make that phone call is the President of the United States. Right. So that was really the egregious part. Um, I think that Hope Hicks could do a really good job. I mean, she obviously has the ear of the President. I understand she has a motto of let Trump be Trump, which could be good or could mm -hmm. lead to more uh, stories like the ones we've had this week. Um, that job is so important. One of the most important things you have to be is an honest broker for everybody at the White House because everyone will have a different point of view for a policy or how it should be communicated, and you have to be the one that makes a final decision. And it's a lot of long-range planning. It's not day-to-day -day press work. That's actually the job of Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Well, and speaking of the press secretary, we do have one official statement right now. It just came in from the White House, and it says, White House Chief of Staff John Kelly and Steve Bannon have mutually agreed today would be Steve's last day. We're grateful for his service and wish him the best. Hmm. Short little statement there, Short but it says a lot. Yeah, <laughs> Short and sweet, or not so sweet, depending on who you are. Dana, if you'd be good enough to stick with us, we want to go back to our chief White House correspondent, John Roberts, for just a moment for any updates there might be in the headline of the hour that Steve Bannon is out at the White House, the president's chief strategist. Let's go to our chief White House correspondent. John Roberts. John? Hey, hey, John. And of course, this, along with Ryan's Priebus's firing, uh, was long rumored to kind of be in the works. How long would Steve Bannon last? It looked for a while like he was going to hang in. But then that uh, that discussion that he had with the uh, with the writer from American Prospect really kind of appeared to seal the deal, at least in General John Kelly's eyes, that uh, perhaps uh, Steve Bannon wasn't exactly uh, a, a team player in the way that Kelly would need people who were inside the White House to be a team player. And uh, so, as uh, the White House says, it was mutually agreed upon by General Kelly, the new chief of staff, and Steve Bannon that he would uh, be departing the White House, that today uh, would be his last day. Uh, the New York Times is reporting that uh, he had tendered a resignation a couple of weeks ago on August the 7th. Uh, we're looking into whether or not uh, he had uh, left that resignation with the president for him to decide on or, or whether he decided uh, that he maybe wanted to try to... Uh, 
to get the resignation letter back, but it, it would appear as though with discussions with John Kelly, uh, Steve Bannon is out. We've also confirmed, and Dana Perina mentioned this, that the head of the Office of Public Liaison, George Safakis, is out today as well. He was an ally of Reince Priebus's. Uh, th this is not a surprise. This is something that's been in the works, I'm told, uh, for a while uh, now at the White House, probably more linked to Reince Priebus's departure than Steve Bannon's departure. Uh, so they'll be looking for a new chief strategist. If they replace him, they'll also be looking for a new uh, person to run the Office of Public Liaison. The big question is, and you heard Doug McElway's reporting that a number of conservative groups are protesting uh, Bannon's ouster at the White House. What kind of an effect is this going to have on the president? Uh, Bannon was widely seen as being a link between the president and a very strong element of his base, though there are other people in the White House, Kellyanne Conway among them, who have links to the base as well, and stronger links with women than Steve Bannon would. So we don't really know what the political upshot of that is going to be right now. Uh, I would say, though, they do have some time uh, to work that out. Uh, there's still a little more than three years to go before the next election is held, maybe a couple of years before they start to actively campaign. But there's no question that Bannon was well respected by many people in the conservative side of the Republican Party. He was very anti-establishment, so much so and so much of a populist that he was a real lone voice in the wilderness on the tax reform proposal where he said he wanted the top tax bracket for people who are making more than five million dollars a year to start with a four and there was nobody else, to my knowledge, in the senior staff at the White House that was pushing anything like that. So, And we did spend some time with Steve Bannon back in the 100 days mark. Uh, we were in his office for about an hour and a half, and it was literally a war room inside there. He had whiteboards up on two of the walls with all of the proposals and policy agenda items that he wanted to get passed. There were a few check marks up on that wall, but the majority of what he wanted to get through uh, still uh, remained up there without a check mark on it. So there are probably some people who will say, well, just how effective was he? And was he more of a divisive figure than he was a unifying figure at the White House or, or in terms of a figure who was uh, getting things done at the White House, John? So I think you know the final story was Steve Bannon, uh, his tenure there at the White House, as well as how his departure came about still to be written. But we're uh, checking with some folks on the ladder, and uh, we'll report back to you just as soon as we find out. All right. John Roberts, our chief White House correspondent. Rob, uh, John, thank you. Yeah, I think we still have Dana Perino on the phone. Uh, Dana, if you're still standing by, um, you know, what do you make of actually replacing Steve Bannon? Because, you know, the Steve or the chief strategist position was something that we hadn't really seen before President Trump. Well, actually, Karl Rove um, in our administration was considered the senior strategist. And possibly, I think, in the Obama administration, it was Valerie Jarrett. I think it's an important position because, as John was just reporting, you know, you look at the promises the president made in a campaign, the policies he wants to achieve. You build that up against the calendar and you try to decide how can we best help the president achieve his or her goals. So I think that a chief strategist is actually a very good one. And not to add anything more to her plate, but I sort of feel like Kellyanne Conway already plays that role to a large extent. And I know she's got many different hats that she's wearing right now, but in many ways, I think she is uh, perfect for the role of chief strategist for the president. I want to point out that uh, the major stock averages are up, Dana, on the news that Steve <laughs> Bannon is out. It's funny how this stuff works, but the Dow Jones was down about 109 points this morning until around 11.15 Eastern time when it was announced, Axios first broke the story that uh, today would be Steve Bannon's last day, the online uh, Washington covering news service. And right around 11.15, the Dow Jones went into positive territory and it is up right now, just a couple of points. So um, Wall Street seems to like the departure of the president's now former chief strategist, Dana. Well, I feel that I don't know enough anything about markets really, but. Um people look for, and I understand markets like, is certainty. And so there's been a 